What'll I do with this baby in a manger? What'll I do with this baby in a manger? Strange night, twilight is dimming. I hear you say, Blessed art thou among women. Blessed live for this command I was given. Gabriel came to me, God's words. I should have been stoned to death for this incident. Joseph could have left. It all seemed imminent, but his dream too. Came from the omnipotent. I should have stayed in Galilee. 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 I was given his commands in the vapor of a dream. Question every word, what does it all mean? There are people in the shed I've never even seen. How did God know Joseph would forgive me? We traveled that day. Stars said we can't see you. Herod wanted every shekel in Judea. They found it in tax, shaped by a fig tree. Gabriel came to me with God's word. I should have been stoned to death for this miracle I've never heard declared. An account this spiritual and so calm, his voice was lyrical. I should have stayed in Galilee. Merry Christmas, St. Albans, and Merry Christmas to friends near and far who are worshiping with us on this most holy of nights. Whoever you are and wherever you find yourself on your journey of faith, you are very welcome here. I'd like to invite all who are joining us tonight to share a word of greeting in the comment section. And I believe we may have some folks joining us from a bit beyond the Davidson, North Carolina area. So please say hello and let us know from where you are joining us tonight. Tonight's service is like no other Christmas Eve service this parish has ever seen. And also, it is exactly like every other Christmas Eve service this parish has ever seen because it is made up of the same ingredients beautiful music, ancient words of scripture made relevant for our time, the Holy Family, and you. While we're not able to gather in person in our nave for so many of our cherished traditions, we still gather. We gather together right from the safety of our own homes as a people committed to the well-being and health of one another and our neighbors, something that I believe Jesus himself would do given the circumstances. Like every year, it has taken a tremendous amount of effort on the part of so many people to bring this service to you tonight. 
I want to thank those who have contributed a scripture reading or music or artwork, the Flower Guild for making this space so beautiful. To all of our virtual choir members and guest musicians, thank you. To the families who participated in the pageant, thank you. Thank you to our wonderful staff for all their work in helping make this service happen. And I would be remiss if I did not publicly thank Matt Presson for contributing countless hours to tech support, video editing, and musical arrangements to make this service happen. Thank you to all those who have shared their gifts to bring this service to us tonight. And I pray very much that tonight's service will be a blessing for you. There's something in it for everyone. If you need to belt out some familiar carols and let those timeless words of triumphant, triumphant faith wash over you and fortify you, you can do that here tonight. If you need some quiet, reflective space to dwell in the mystery of God's word made flesh, you will find that here tonight. If you need to smile and maybe even laugh while seeing children retell the greatest story ever told, you will be able to do that here tonight. And if you need a little comfort and joy with a healthy dash of hope, I think you will find that here tonight as well. So I invite you to settle in, maybe light a candle in your home, and prepare your hearts and minds for worship. Once in royal David's city stood a lovely cattle shed where a mother laid her baby with a manger for his bed. Mary was that mother mild, Jesus Christ, a little child. Dear people of God, in this Christmas season, let it be our duty and delight to hear once more the message of the angels, to go to Bethlehem and see the Son of God lying in a manger. Let us hear and heed in Holy Scripture the story of God's loving purpose from the time of our rebellion 
until the glorious redemption brought to us by the holy child Jesus. And let us make this world glad with our carols of praise. But first, let us pray for the needs of his whole church, for peace and justice on earth, for the unity and mission of the church for which he died, and especially for his church in our country and in this region. And because he particularly loves them, let us remember in his name those who are poor or helpless, those who are cold or hungry, those who are oppressed, those who are sick and those who mourn, those who are lonely or unloved, those who are old or young, as well as those who do not know and love the Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, let us remember before God his pure and lowly mother and that whole multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom in Jesus we are one forevermore. And now to gather up all these petitions, let us pray in the words which Christ himself has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Almighty God, bless us with his grace, Christ, give us the joys of everlasting life, and to the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of angels bring us all. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light. But he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the world became flesh, and lived among us, and we have seen his glory the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the book of Genesis. Now the serpent was more crafty than any wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden. Nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. 
the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his hill. The Word of the Lord. The Coming by R.S. Thomas And God held in his hand a small globe. Look, he said. The sun looked. Far off, as through water, he saw a scorched land of fierce color. The light burned there. Crusted buildings cast their shadows. A bright serpent, a river uncoiled itself, radiant with slime. On a bare hill, a bare tree saddened the sky. Many people held out their thin arms to it, as though waiting for a vanished April to return to its crossed boughs. The sun watched them. Let me go there, he said. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Again the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol, or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, I, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David. Is it too little for you to weary mortals, that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, young woman is with child and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. The Word of the Lord.
A reading from the book of Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Just a few moments ago, we heard those beautiful poetic words from the beginning of John's gospel. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. That term, word, translates the Greek term logos, from which we derive our word logic. But here John is not talking about human rational logic. John is talking about God's logic. According to God's logic, the Messiah came to us not as a worldly king or a conquering hero, but rather, according to God's logic, the Messiah came to us as a baby born to a peasant couple in a backwater, out-of-the-way location. The Messiah came to us not as someone of power and authority, but as a vulnerable little baby who was wrapped in swaddling cloths and laid in the feeding trough of a farm animal because there was no room for them in the inn. According to God's logic, the mother of this baby was not some royal figure, but was a peasant girl who ultimately gave birth to the Son of God because she was willing to trust God and God's purposes for her and for the world. According to God's logic, this baby grew up as a simple boy, the son of a carpenter, not in a place of wealth or great education. But according to God's logic, this simple boy became one who was called rabbi, teacher, and did indeed become the one who many first century Jews believed was the Messiah, the Son of God. According to God's logic, this baby who grew into this man who became a rabbi and a teacher became so important that he was ultimately arrested by the authorities and put to death. But according to God's logic, he overcame death and the grave. According to God's logic, through him, death became resurrection and new life. According to God's logic, through faith in Him, we too 
can have new life even in the face of death. According to God's logic, salvation is had not through power and control and domination, but rather salvation is had through trust, surrender, and self-giving love. God's logic is not our logic. Thanks be to God. Amen. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favorite one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. How can this be since I have been practicing social distancing? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now you, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month of her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Here I am, servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. The angel departed from her. It came upon the midnight clear that glorious song of all from angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold. Peace on the earth, good will to from hands all gracious King. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels Still through the cloven skies they come with peaceful wings unfurled, and still the heavenly music floats o'er all the weary world. Above its sad and Yet with the woes 
woes of sin and strife, the world has suffered long. Beneath the heavenly hymn have grown two thousand years of wrong, and warring human kind is not the time. And cease your strife, and hear the angels sing. And ye beneath life's crushing load, whose forms are bent. days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was not sufficient ventilation in the inn.
In that region, there were essential workers living in the fields, keeping watch over the flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am brightening you good news of great joy for all the people to you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising god and saying glory to god in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those who he favors when the angels had left them and gone into heaven the shepherds said to one another Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made none known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them.
In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observe his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, all of Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them when the, where the Messiah was to be born, they told him. In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men, and learned from the exact time when the star had appeared. But then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word, so I may also pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. After quarantining, for twelve days they entered a house and saw the child with Mary his mother and knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. First Coming, a poem by Madeline Lingle. He did not wait till the world was ready, till men and nations were at peace. He came when the heavens were unsteady, and prisoners cried out for release. He did not wait for the perfect time. He came when the need was deep and great. He dined with sinners in all their grime, turned water into wine. He did not wait, till hearts were pure in joy he came to a tarnished world of sin and doubt, to a world like ours of anguish shame. He came and his light would not go out. He came to a world which did not mesh, to heal its tangles, shield its scorn. In the mystery of the word made flesh, the maker of the stars was born. We cannot wait till the world is sane to raise our songs with joyful voice. For to share our grief, to touch our pain, he came with love. Rejoice, rejoice. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Long ago... God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. The Word of the Lord. Incarnate Lord, uphold thou me that I might uplift thee. Amen. Well, in many ways, it has been a surprising year. 
So much has transpired since the last time we gathered in the nave to celebrate the birth of our Savior. Some of the surprises have been good ones, and plenty of the surprises have been really, really hard. And the surprises are not over yet. Tomorrow morning, you might find some surprises under your Christmas tree or in your stocking. Christmas is all about surprises. And as it turns out, we have a God who loves surprises. At Christmas, we tell the stories of some surprises that happened long, long ago. As you heard from the lessons told so beautifully by our parish children, one starry night in a small city in Palestine, the biggest surprise ever came thundering into the lives of a courageous and road-weary couple. It was not the birth scenario that Mary had imagined for herself. She expected to have her baby back home with the women of Nazareth there to support her. But when Jesus' newborn wails rang out into the stillness of that Bethlehem night, and when his tiny fist curled around her index finger and gripped with uncommon strength, Mary knew that this surprise would end up changing her life forever. And not just her life. It did not take very long at all for others to notice the surprise. They were drawn to him. Some, like the poor, weather-beaten shepherds, were drawn by the hope of a leader who would save them and protect the poor and vulnerable. To be honest, they were surprised that the angels had it right. There he was, right where they said he would be, tiny and perfect. Others, like those scholarly magicians, were drawn by the promise of a noble child king arriving with their extravagant and deeply symbolic gifts, they were surprised to find royalty in such a humble dwelling. Over and over again, this baby would surprise people who thought they had things all figured out. I wonder what surprises you most about the Christ child. I have been surprised again and again by the ways he has shown up throughout this crazy hard year filled with so much loss and strife. In the midst of Facebook church and Zoom coffee hour, surprise, Jesus shows up. In the midst of postponed weddings and intimate funerals and canceled plans, surprise, Jesus shows up. In the midst of ICUs with machines beeping and tender-hearted but matter-of-fact nurses coming in to check on things and family members at home clutching their phones waiting for a call from the doctor, surprise, Jesus shows up. In the food pantry line, in the chemo chair, in the virtual classroom, again and again, Jesus surprises us with his ability to be present whenever and wherever we need him. This is the great surprise of Christmas, that in Jesus, God has come to be with us, to be one of us. Tonight, from this place, and from every living room, sofa, and kitchen, counter where we are scattered, we proclaim our faith in the mystery of this surprising gift. We proclaim it in our words. We proclaim it in our actions. And now we proclaim it with our voices raised in song. So sing with whatever voice you've got, high or low, soft or loud, trembling or smooth. Let us sing of his surprising humility. Let us sing of his tender grace. And let us sing 
of his eternal and steadfast love for us all. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. When the song of the angels is stilled, 
when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and the princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, then the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among people, to make music in the heart. May God, who sent angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. May the work of Christmas begin in you tonight and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this night and always. Amen. Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah. 